season, there's a new quarterback leading our team onto the field and hopefully to a victorious season. Tony Dillatel has an inspirational story on how Alex Farron accomplished his goals at being the starting varsity quarterback. Whether it's the chants in the stands or the t-shirts in the hallways, Mason High School students have made it apparent that they're behind varsity quarterback Alex Farron. But Farron isn't your typical starting quarterback. After not playing football his 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th grade years, he spent most of last year on JV hoping to get the chance to compete for a starting job this season. But not only did he compete, he won it. Farron accredits his success to hard work during the offseason. As the offseason year went on, I realized that uh, I might actually have a chance. So then I sort of motivated me to uh, keep on working harder. Over the offseason, I ate a lot of vegetables and healthy foods, uh, lifted a lot of weights, and um, threw a lot of footballs. Coach Dave Sedmak was faced with a dilemma coming into the 2009 season with no returnees at the quarterback spot. But seeing his substantial improvement over the offseason, Sedmak decided to go with Farron. Oh, Alex has improved dramatically over the offseason. He really worked hard, uh, not just on, he, he worked on hard on getting bigger and stronger and faster, but he also worked hard on his passing and his mechanics and uh, um, his accuracy. And uh, really, it was, we were pretty surprised watching him throw the ball all summer, how well he was doing. Farron's friends have created somewhat of a following for him even going as far as creating t-shirts to support him. Evan Harris is one of Farron's most enthusiastic promoters. I mean, he's like the most least stereotypical varsity quarterback. You always think of a jock, which it's not Alex at all. So we figured we'd mess around with it, came up with some ideas to, to like me and Cosm and others that in the hallway to like bow down to him in the hallways or throw blocks, just, just stuff, stuff like that to kind of mess around with him. High school football is spontaneous and unpredictable, just like Farron's entrance to the quarterback spot. With the whole student body behind him, you can't help but think that Farron feels right at home when he steps onto the turf at Atrium Stadium. I'm Tony DeLatel, NBC Sports. Last year, Griffin Frank gave us a unique look inside of some of Mason High School's most demanding sports. This season, he's back, and he takes on the rigorous sport of cross country. Two days from now, the Mason varsity football team will take on Hamilton in the always anticipated homecoming game. Lexi Orlando has a story from both sides of the line of scrimmage. The homecoming football game is arguably one of the most anticipated games of the year for both the players and the fans. A jacked up crowd will pack the stands at Atrium Stadium in hopes of seeing the Comets roll over their sacrificial homecoming opponent. Typically, the team targeted as the homecoming opponent is a foe considered beatable, thus giving hope to the team and the fans for a satisfying kickoff to their weekend homecoming festivities. This year, the homecoming opponent is Hamilton, and in an interesting twist of fate, it just so happens that Mason was the Big Blue's homecoming opponent last year. So does that mean the Comets were considered one of the weaker opponents on Hamilton's schedule last year and thus offering the Big Blue a chance at a walkover homecoming win? Senior standout Nick Weeby does not like the fact that the Comets didn't get any respect then and they still don't seem to be getting any now. He hopes to give Hamilton a little taste of their own medicine and return the favor of a homecoming beatdown. Um, how I feel about Hamilton picking us as their homecoming game last year, it's, uh, it's kind of disrespectful, like not intentionally though. I mean... They don't mean any disrespect, but at the same time, you pick somebody who you think you can beat. So I'm definitely excited to return the favor. The Comets face an opponent on Hunkway night that appear to be struggling, but at a closer look, reveals a team that battled Corrine down to the wire and a team that boasts one of the top running backs in the league, Devin Jarrett. The NBC Sports crew headed over to Hamilton to see how the Big Blue felt about coming to the Mason and being the Comets' homecoming opponent. I feel playing Mason as a, your guys' homecoming game. Actually, I think that's going to be an easier test for Big Blue than it is will be for Mason. I mean, we played you guys last year, and it was a it was a landslide victory for Hamilton's behalf. And I was, you know, I was the player of the game, two touchdowns, 113 yards, 16 carries. And overall, our defense played good. I mean, so I think this will be an easier game for Hamilton than for Mason. While Hamilton has some of the league's statistical leaders, the Big Blue hasn't necessarily been tearing up so far this season, but they're confident they will succeed in their objective of ruining homecoming night for the common players and fans. Go to sleep Thursday, probably dream about the game, come to school Friday, think about the game, and then after school we're going to be ready to play. The comments don't appear to be getting very much respect from the Hamilton players. Some of their players aren't even very familiar with Mason players. 
I heard of some kid named Nick Weege, Weege, some name like kid Weege, number four. Uh, he's a he's a decent player. I seen him play against Trout Will on TV. He did all right, but that's all I heard. I don't know no other players. He'll definitely uh, remember my name and be able to pronounce it right after the game's over with. I can guarantee that. Homecoming night promises to be an exciting night for the fans and the players, but Hamilton players have some words of caution for the Comets. What I got to say to the Mason players who are watching this, I hope y'all ready and come hard. We're going to win again. Big blue. Good luck. Bring y'all game because y'all going to need it. Good luck. See y'all October 9th. Most teams hate being their opponent homecoming night target, just as the Comets did not enjoy being Hamilton the season ago. The Comets hope to return the favor this season and send the Big Blue back to their buses on a long return trip back to Hamilton, disappointed in their attempt to spoil homecoming for the Comet fans and players. I'm Lexi Orlando, NBC Sports. Now here's Chris Lehman and Eric Raffle with NBC Sports Top 5 Best and Worst Plays. My name is Eric Raffle, and I'm Chris Lehman, and these are your top five plays. Coming in at number five, we have Brittany Gosson with the redonkulous dive. Redonkulous. Number four is Mackenzie Money with a throw in two. It's Megan Fry with the slow-mo juke. Oh my goodness, where's the defender go? Okay. Ooh, number three is Janice Atkinson with the sexy step over. Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Here at number two, we have the one and only Tyler Galley. Kicks it up to Evan Spearman, and he kicks it, and we have a goal! Coming in at number one is the play everyone knows. The ha fake handoff to Matthew Bertrams. The deep, deep, deep bomb to Ethan King for the touchdown, folks. What position is Alex Farron? The quarterback! Okay. We're back. But this time for the not top five. Number five is Mr. Silverman. He tries to hit the ball, but he ends up catching it. Keimer says touchdown. It's a touchdown, folks. Number four, Caleb Easton has the strongest leg on the male soccer team, but it creeps up. Oh, and he falls on his bottom. Number three, we have Derek Henson trying to catch it. Oh, but he can't do it. Oh. Look at the beautiful sunset, though. Number two is our beloved cheerleaders trying to launch a t-shirt into the stands. Will they do it? Oh, God, wait, wait, we can fix it. Oh, oh, it's on the ground. We can't, oh, oh, hey, Lindsay, we see you too. Number one is Matthew Hager with the, oh, my God. The bicycle kick. He hit the wrong ball, Jimmy, oh. the wrong ball. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for the new top and not top five plays in Mason High School. I'm Chris Lehman. I'm Eric Raffle. NBC Sports. Is cheerleading really a sport? No comment. Now back to Annie with more about the students making news here at Mason High School.